apocalyptic damage, there's nothing left, and homes are completely gone. There is nothing left but foundations. An F5 tornado with winds in excess of 260 miles per hour just swept through this location, leaving behind total devastation. These are sites you would expect to see in Oklahoma or Kansas, but on May 31st, 1985, that was not the case. On May 31st, 1985, these sites were seen in Ohio and Pennsylvania. It's May 31st, 1985, and there's a major threat looming in the air over the Great Lakes region. Throughout the day, an unseasonably deep and strong low pressure system at 984 millibars moved from the Midwest to the upper Michigan Peninsula. Ahead of this low pressure system, extremely warm and unstable air moved into the region. Temperatures reached 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Dew points reached well into the upper 60s and even lower 70 in some spots, signaling extremely uncomfortable tropical air. Abundant sunshine also allowed for the formation of two to 3,000 joules of cape, along with strong wind shear in the atmosphere. Along with all of these other parameters, an elevated mix layer is in place that will keep thunderstorms from forming before the most volatile atmosphere possible is in place. To make a dangerous situation even worse, the abundance of moisture in the atmosphere would allow any storm that develops to strengthen extremely quickly and become HP. HP means high precipitation, which also means that any tornado that forms would likely be buried deep in the rain within the thunderstorms, meaning that nobody would be able to see it coming. The day started off with a bad omen for what was to come, when the warm front lifting through the area in the morning already produced a tornado and golf ball sized hail in the area. As the warm front cleared through the area and brought in the loaded gun environment, all that was needed to get storms going was a trigger. And that trigger would come shortly thereafter, in the form of a trailing cold front racing east across the area. This cold front already had a history of destruction and terror, as on the day prior it had produced numerous tornadoes in Iowa and Wisconsin. As the cold front drew closer, storms initially developed around 1.30pm and first in Canada. It would take a little bit longer for storms on the U.S. side of the border, but at 2.50 p.m. storms would finally get going and would erupt violently as previously mentioned. As the afternoon progresses, the elevated mix layer would allow for thunderstorms to develop, but would only allow for the strongest of the updrafts to survive. This means that each thunderstorm that could maintain itself would be extremely powerful and intense. Also, because the storms were isolated and not fighting with each other, that would feed each of them even more energy. As the afternoon progresses and the storms continue to intensify, one of them is about to become the dominant one and begins to spin rapidly. Shortly thereafter, the storm in question drops a tornado at 6.30 p.m. near the town of Ravenna, Ohio. As the tornado quickly gains strength, it heads into Newton Falls producing F3 to F4 damage. Although the tornado produced immense damage in this town, with nearly 400 homes being damaged or destroyed, nobody was killed because they were well prepared for this situation. As the storm continues tracking east, the tornado reaches F5 intensity as it enters the town of Niles. In the town of Niles, the Park Plaza shopping center was completely leveled and partially swept away by the tornado, with several fatalities occurring at this spot. The tornado was quite intense here as it buckled numerous steel girders, and just slightly downwind from this spot, an ice skating rink and a new retirement home were also completely leveled by the tornado, causing a few more fatalities. As the tornado continued through the town of Niles, it struck an industrial area and hit some 30-foot tall metal petroleum storage tanks that each weighed 75,000 pounds. The tornado then took each of these metal petroleum tanks and ripped them from the ground where they were anchored and threw them hundreds of yards away from where they originated. Once the tornado passed through this area, it did weaken slightly as it tore through the towns of Hubbard and Colesburg. However, the tornado still leveled numerous buildings in each of these towns even at a slightly less intensity. The tornado then crossed the border into Pennsylvania and almost as if on cue strengthened rapidly back into an F5 tornado and expanded to a half a mile wide. The tornado struck the town of Wheatland, hitting a steel frame trucking plant and obliterating it and sweeping the debris clean away. At a nearby business, parts of the parking lot asphalt were torn off the ground by the tornado. 
Also, shards of sheet metal and routing slips were left wedged between the remaining cracks in the pavement. As the tornado was tearing through Wheatland, one of the locals recorded this stunning video of it. This infamous photo was also taken when the tornado was tracking through Wheatland. The tornado damaged or destroyed 95% of the town of Wheatland, leaving the whole town completely unrecognizable. According to one local in town, he said the town now resembles something that of a bombed out battlefield. The tornado continued tracking east and once again began to weaken slightly, now impacting the town of Hermitage still at a violent intensity. In town, 71 buildings, including the local airport and some planes, were destroyed by the tornado. After the storm had passed, one of the wings from the plane was found 10 miles away in the nearby town of Mercer. Also in this town was another truck steel processing plant that was heavily damaged by the tornado. While impacting this town, another local took an incredible video of the tornado. The tornado continued on its path, destroying and damaging another 45 homes in the town of Greenfield before finally dissipating just beyond town. In total, the tornado was on the ground for 1 hour and 15 minutes and tracked 47 miles crossing parts of two states. The tornado would claim 18 lives and injure a further 310. In Ohio, this was the deadliest tornado since the Xenia F5 tornado back on April 3, 1974 during the original super outbreak. In Pennsylvania, this was and still is the most deadly and intense tornado to have ever hit the state. This was also one of only three F5 tornadoes to hit the United States in the 1980s. Although this particular tornado was done, the actual tornado outbreak itself was not done yet, with the last tornado occurring a few hours later around midnight local time. In total, this tornado outbreak would end up claiming 90 lives, making it one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks in US history. This tornado outbreak was the deadliest tornado outbreak to have occurred since the previously mentioned 1974 super outbreak, and that mark would stand until the next super outbreak in 2011. The amount of and intensity of other tornadoes in this outbreak is also something that should not be overlooked. 43 other tornadoes would touch down, with numerous other violent tornadoes occurring, including 8 other F4 tornadoes across portions of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Canada. A few of these F4 tornadoes were actually on the ground for longer than the Niles F5 and arguably could have been stronger. One of the F4 tornadoes tracked for 69 miles in dense, unpopulated forest areas of central Pennsylvania, with the damage path being estimated to be up to 2.5 miles wide. The tornado was actually so strong that it shook the ground enough to register on local seismographs. Local radars also took pictures of this storm, showing a classic hook echo with even a debris ball evident. Another one of the F4s that touched down in Pennsylvania tracked for 56 miles and is the second deadliest tornado in state history only after the F5 from earlier in the day. The May 31st, 1985 tornado outbreak left damages up to $600 million and set numerous records which are still in place to this day almost 40 years later. 
In an analysis of the event afterwards, experts estimated that the probabilities of another severe weather outbreak as widespread and catastrophic as this one, occurring this far north and east in North America, was 1 in 75,000. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you learned something, and thank you for watching.